G'day guys, Chris Dari here. Today I'm going to cover 15 AFL delisted free agents that I think are worth a second shot for season 2022. So this would be, of course, during this delisted free agency period in 2021 or in the 2021 AFL draft, which could also be inclusive of the rookie draft and preseason draft. So to go through the names, so number one, and this was for me at least a shock delisting. I don't know if it was for you guys at home as well, but Hugh Greenwood. So with a Greenwood, what I look at is his inside game and what he does as a tackler are, are absolutely elite. So if I was to look at his contested possessions last year, he was top five. So this is back in 2010. And then this year as well, he was nearing that elite bracket, not quite. And then you look at the tackling and pressure acts as well, and it was in the absolute elite categories. So you've got that sort of guy. And again, this year with Gold Coast, the disclaimer is, well, they didn't have wits and they didn't have a Ruckman for most of the season. So having that sort of contribution on the inside is really something. So, And look, with Greenwood, the facts are he's a pure inside player with a very limited game otherwise. So he's someone where you take him as a specialist and you really have to, I guess, appreciate what he does and get him with a purpose. So if you're, let's say, a Collingwood where you've got a pretty sort of, I guess you could say, young and soft midfield where they don't have those real sort of high-end tacklers, those big bodies that can really win it inside, that's the sort of team where I'd be saying a Hugh Greenwood would fit. So um, Gold Coast, of course, have delisted him with the intention to redraft him. So they'd be doing so late in the draft because Gold Coast, of course, need to be drafting three players, as do all clubs in the draft. So that's the reason behind that. And, of course, coming back from that sort of major injury. But with a Greenwood, look, Gold Coast obviously wouldn't be sort of delisting him not to take him because he's still got a few years on his contract. I believe his contract ends at the end of 2023. So... Um, what I'd be doing as a rival club, I would very happily get in before Gold Coast and draft him. Um, specifically, if I do have that need for that strong big body on the inside who can really win the ball, can protect the other midfielders around him, provide that pressure and that tackling, that, that's really sort of what I'd be looking at him for. And he can also help in, I guess, getting the other players up to scratch as well in those elements of the game since he's so proficient there too. So I see a few benefits there. But for me, I'd say he's a starting best 22 player, if assuming healthy, really across the board, any team. I just love what he does on the inside. So, And look, you have to be aware he's not doing anything on the outside and look forward of center. He's not great either, but as a pure midfielder, for the minutes he's in there, I really rate him very highly. So... Um, but number two on the list, so Blake Slenslog. So, and he wasn't actually delisted this um, d this off season. It was actually the off season before. But under the delisted free agency rules, you can actually delist guys who have been delisted in the past. So, um, and, and with a Slenslog, look, he's had a great season. So, what he was doing in the waffle, particularly in the first half as a key defender, he's someone where, although the second half of the season playing as a key forward. He was a bit inconsistent, wouldn't draft him as that. But as a key defender, I think he'd be a really good get. And he's still young, rapidly improving every year. So he's got that upward trajectory. Just reads it better than really anyone I've ever seen. So, And look, his overhead marking could become a bit more solid, a bit more consistent. But just with the way he reads the game alone, and plus he's also got the rebounding components as a good athlete, good kick, I think he's someone where absolutely he needs another shot. And I think probably a Geelong is a good chance to redraft him. They know all about him. They've obviously got that history with him, but any club needing a key defender, and particularly more that sort of, I guess, rebounding, intercepting type, more your center half back than your deep defender, I'd be looking very closely at a Slenslog. So um, number three, and he's actually already been picked up, but um, for Port Adelaide, Sam Skinner. So of course, a previous Brisbane player, and as with Slenslog, he was delisted, not this um, this off season, but last year's off season in 2020. So, um, and with a Skinner, I've really enjoyed his play during the second half of the season in the Sandfall as a key defender. So, and of course those junior talent watchers, well, you would have no doubt been watching, um, South Adelaide and watching the likes of Jason Horn, Francis, Matthew Roberts, a bit of Arlo Draper and Skinner's just really been a bonus in there where of course he's those years older, he'd be a 24 year old now. But in terms of what he was doing is that intercept marking, contested marking beast in defense, absolutely terrific. So as with a Slenslog, I'd be saying I, I wouldn't draft him as a key forward or get him in a, as a key forward in any capacity, but what he does in defense is terrific. So I actually think Skinner will be seeing next year 
quite possibly even as a regular for Port Adelaide. That's how highly I value him. So you could easily pair both he and Alia as your um, key defenders, and I, I think that would really work quite well. I, I think he's an upgrade personally there as a key defender for Port Adelaide. So I think terrific get, particularly for a contending team, given what he was doing, because he had a final. This was his second last final. He had 10 contested marks. Well, that's crazy stuff, doing that in a final. So you're looking at a really legit option as that real sort of interceptor, and he's good one on one So you've got those options as well. Um, fourth on my list. So this might be a bit of a surprise name and maybe a name a lot of people wouldn't be familiar with, but Biggie Nguyen. So Biggie or Nguyen. So he was a late pick a few years ago for Richmond. So he's only had the two years on Richmond's list. And look, he just hasn't had the opportunity ultimately. So, and this has been the problem. So of course, no VFL last year. How can you develop as a young kid? And then this year, of course, you've had sort of the first half of the VFL season. Second half was a write-off because again, cancelled. So with someone with the talent of a new one, look, the talent's still there, but he hasn't had the chance to develop. He needs the games in him. And again, this is a third key defender on the list, but I really do believe in Biggie's talent. For me, looking at what he was doing as a junior compared to Alir Alir, Biggie was actually the better player at the same age and stage. So much more natural reader of the ball, much more natural intercept mark, much better overhead, much more solid overhead for the same age. And he's still skinny. He's still a development project, but he's someone where I'd be saying, look, give him two, maybe three years, just see what he can do because he's someone where he's got the talent where he can be a genuine best 22 player. So um, yeah, he's certainly someone I haven't given up on as a talent. And look, there's, as far as I'm aware, not really the interest in him. So he'd be someone where you could pretty easily just sort of pick him up in the rookie draft and get him there. So you don't even need a senior list spot for him. But um, I'd certainly be very keen to pick him up. Um, next up on the list, and again, this guy's already been picked up, but Tyson Stengel. So started his career with Richmond, went to Adelaide, got delisted, had his off-field issues. And look, with a Stengel, the disclaimer is he's not someone that I would take in every situation, but Geelong is the one situation that I do like him in. Maybe there's a few other spots you could make a case. But with Geelong bringing on Eddie Betts as a development coach, I think that was a very intentional move. So I think he's really going to play a big part in what Stengel does, help him stay focused on his footy. And in terms of Stengel's talent, he's really got that. So even though he's a smaller forward, he's really strong. So he's got that strength through the core, hard to tackle to ground, just such a natural ground level, has the instincts around goal. So he's a really talented small forward. And his season in the Sandfall was huge. So he was really that premier, I guess you could say, small forward outside the AFL. So... Um, yeah, he's a plug and play. You could play him round one and he's going to play good footy. So um, yeah, Stengel's a really good talent. So yeah, watch out for what he could be doing next year because he can most certainly play. Um, number six on my list. So we've got Tom Lynch. So, um, and, and of course, this is the <laughs> the Tom Lynch that Adelaide delisted. So, and look, for me, it was actually a really surprising delisting. I thought he was still playing good footy and he's got a few more good years in him. So that was a weird one. Um, his plan is to be joining North Melbourne as a development coach, but I, I think it would be just really an opportunity missed for North Melbourne not to actually senior list um, a Tom Lynch. So just pick him up as a delisted free agent, give him a one-year deal. You can just go and give him one year after one year, and that's more than fine because he's someone who fundamentally can still play. He's, he's still covering the ground well. He's still that sort of lead-up target, and he's still really effective. So... Um, and if not for the signing with North Melbourne, I'd be saying, look, other teams, go sign this guy. He can still play. He's still a best 22 AFL calibre piece and one who's been given up on prematurely. So, um, yeah, someone I'm still pretty confident in. So, um, yeah, hopefully North Melbourne get him. I don't think they'll choose to, but I think it's just a waste. I think it's giving up on someone who's still a really good footballer too early, which happens every off season. But I, I think he's really one of those names where this year he's that guy. So I'm um, moving down the list and this name ne won't necessarily be the most popular among many, but I still fundamentally believe in his game. So Marty Gleeson, who has been with Essendon for a number of years now. So, um, and look, he's moving deeper into his twenties. So he is getting on in years, but in terms of why I actually like his game. So really natural reader of the play intercepts really well. So tick there. What he does one-on-one -on -one is actually really good. So he's a very capable defender, can 
negate the influence of his opponents quite effectively, and he's also a really good rebounder and ball user. So he's really got that all-round game that's actually really quite strong. So if I'm just looking for another piece in defense as a general defender who you can just play him round one, just lock him in, I really like his game. Is that, again, really all-round talent who does everything to a good level. So, um, yeah, I, I really like him. And I think for a number of years now, and look, he's had his injuries, but I feel like Essendon have really underutilized him quite a bit. So um, given that, well, it just means potentially an opportunity for another club if they see the talent in him. He was delisted last year. Essendon rookied him. I don't think he's going to get another chance, but he's certainly someone... If I was really thin in defense, maybe whether it's a North Melbourne or someone like that, I'd be very willing to take him on. I think he'd be a good piece. Maybe even an Adelaide could be a shot. So teams sort of along those lines, I think, would be really good spots. And even possibly a Melbourne where they're maybe a touch thin in defense. Look, you could easily rookie him. And I think just as that ready-made option, I think he really solidifies things. And I'd even say is possibly a marginal upgrade, maybe ever so incremental upgrade on a Hibbard would be my personal call there. So um, I, I do still think there is that possible spot for a Gleeson on the right team anyway in defense. Um, but moving on to number eight. So Jared Pollock is another I'm liking. So North Melbourne, look, I think it's probably giving up on him a bit early and really has been quite underutilized by North Melbourne, a bit like as I would have said in years past with an Aaron Hall. So um, with a Pollock, look, he can still run. He can still use the footy. On the outside, if you're really looking for that guy who can really get you the meters gained, really do some damage, I think there's space for a Pollock. So, um, yeah, someone I haven't given up on. And look, I'm not sure necessarily what the interest would be in him, but he'd be someone I'd be, again, very happy just to rookie. Because if you look at really the odds of getting a good rookie... I'd say probably a Pollock would be a pretty decent bet. And look, if you want that sort of short-term option who can give you that boost on the outside, if you're really lacking that guy, I really like him still as a piece who really is an AFL standard piece for me. Um, moving on, number nine. So we've got Levi Casbolt. So again, I'm looking at a lot of veterans, but these guys can still fundamentally play. So with a Casbolt, look, he did have a bit of a disappointing year this year, but I don't by any means think it's the end of his career or the end of his journey. I still do think he has another one, maybe two years, and it just really depends on what you need. So maybe you're a Brisbane, Hipwood's hurt. Look, maybe you could have a Casbold as a stopgap there who can be that certainly adequate key forward, and look, you can play him some relieving ruck minutes. You've got those sorts of options there, and that's fine. But with a Casbolt, given his contested marking gifts, I think you could even play him as a key defender, and that might even be a better use case. So, And look, he's only had the tiniest of tastes as a key defender. He hasn't really had the chance there, but I think really based on how well he reads the game and how strong of a contested mark he is, that that's really how you maximize his game, and that might be how you get a few more years out of him as opposed to as a key forward where, look, maybe he's adequate for a year or two. So um, that would be one of the other potential visions there with a Casbolt. So, um, yeah, again, it's just that option where if you're a bit thin, I think he's pretty solid. Whether it's for depth, I actually think he's still that best 22 caliber piece. So, And for me, the key is really they have to be someone who can just slot into a best 22 or they're someone where if they're a bit younger, they're sort of developing towards and have that really good chance once fully developed to be that best 22 player. That's how I'm looking at the equation with each of these players. So um, next up, so number 10, Hamish Hartlett. So, um, and again, really, you could almost say a little bit underutilized by Port Adelaide. I still think he probably could have got another year, honestly. And again, if you're looking for that real sort of outside drive, you've got a piece in Hartlett. I still think he can play a little bit. So um, whether it's some drive-off halfback, whether it's on a wing, you've got those sorts of options with him. So, um, yeah, one I would explore and have on a short list, certainly, if that was something I was in need of. I don't think he's completely finished. He might still, if healthy, and you do your medical tests on him, but if the medicals come back saying, yeah, he's okay, then he's someone I'd certainly have on that short list and explore. Um, next up, David Zaharakis. So similar story with the Hartlett. I think he was really underutilized this year. And I think he's someone where, look, I'd still give him another year and really see what he can do. So of course, big game player, loves the big stage, kills it on Anzac Day every time he plays. So 
Um, yeah, look, he's one of those sorts of players where, again, if he's healthy, I think he could be a piece. And one of the things I find often with those that are actually your over 30s, they can often have a down year, but then if they're healthy the next year, they can actually rebound and have really good years. So I don't necessarily give up as early and as easily on those, I guess, 30 pluses, even your late 20s types, as much as many others would. So I've actually got a willingness to explore them a bit more, particularly if the medicals come back saying they're still healthy. And if you talk to them and they're still motivated to play, they're the sort of cues that I'd be looking for to say, hey, this guy's still an option. So um, moving on, number 12. So I'd be looking at a Charlie Constable as a possible. So he's still young enough, but he's been really sadly underutilized by Geelong. And that's really been the problem all along. So he's that taller ball winning mid, actually a really good kick. And he's been playing fantastic football in the VFL. So he was someone where a bit like a Will Brody, you could pretty easily have traded for him during the trade period and look for a late pick. It's sort of like, that's sort of what you'd pay for him. So, um, and look, Geelong, it looks like they plan to bring him back. Um, but probably as a rookie, I'd be imagining, but, um, yeah, look, I think if you're a bit short through the midfield, maybe it's an Adelaide where they don't really have those over 185 centimetre mids. Maybe you could explore someone like a constable. Maybe it's with a rookie pick or something. So um, is someone where, look, he either goes back to the state leagues next year, plays on, maybe he could be a shot for the mid-season draft, or you could get him now and he could have a shot because he's someone where he's still playing to a really good standard and you could easily slot him in at AFL level and he could look pretty reasonable. That's just a question of would he be a genuine best 22 player for a team? And look, there's probably not many sides that you could say that he'd be in the mix for, but there might be a few where maybe you're a bit thin or a bit short through the midfield and maybe he could be an option there too. Um, but number 13, um, Jared Lynott. So he's been really good for Port Adelaide, particularly in the Sandful for those Sandful watchers. Um, he's that sort of taller, not quite key position defender, but I guess you could almost say he's a third tall, but he intercepts, he rebounds, he's an able piece. So if you're just looking for that component to your defense, um, even though he is sort of moving on in his years, I think he's still that capable lock and load. You can just put him in your team and he'll play good footy. So um, again, another capable component that really people should be aware of can play if they haven't really seen a lot of him. So um, number 14, we've got Aaron Vandenberg. So he's been really sort of, when he's played, he's actually been quite a capable option for Melbourne, but he has had his injuries, which has really been, I guess, that limiting factor. So he's that taller mid, can win his own ball, has that really strong contested sort of game and that plays that contested brand of football. So it is a really good option. Again, if you're a bit thin through the midfield, you want that sort of taller ball winning mid. Again, I'd go back to an Adelaide and say they might be a team where he'd make sense for maybe as a rookie potentially. I, I could see that sort of fit. Maybe he could push for a best 22 spot. So um, yeah, he's someone I certainly wouldn't be giving up on because he's got the game where he can translate with the opportunity to AFL level and if he really gets that extended shot at it. And um, number 15, and this is a name probably a lot of people have forgotten. He's played for Adelaide and was reasonably successful there last few years with Brisbane, and he hasn't really had much of a shot, but Cam Alice Yolman. So a bit like your Hugh Greenwood, I suppose, where he's entirely in that specialist basket where what he does is he wins the contested footy and he does that well. So stoppage specialist, just play him on the inside and let him go to work and win the footy. So... Um, yeah, look, if that's what you're lacking, and again, a Collingwood would be a good situation there where they just don't have that genuine ball winner, I think he could play a role and be certainly serviceable and a genuine best 22 option there. But of course, you just have to be aware of his limitations and you don't play him out of position because he is that specialist. So that's the thing to be aware of. And um, for a bonus name as well, there is actually one additional name that I would add to this list, and that would be... Um, Jared Cameron. So look, he has no interest in playing at AFL level next year, but he's someone where I'd be saying for next off season, keep an eye out for him and really track his play next year um, just in case he does have, I guess, a rejuvenation year. So he is one where he's a really high talent, really rated him in the 2018 draft, but the issue, and he's the brother of um, Brisbane's Charlie Cameron, but the issue for Jared has really been the injuries over the course of time so just having really all those injuries he's just gotten really frustrated and he's chosen even though he 
had an extra year to run on his contract, I believe. He's decided just to retire, wants to have that year away from, I guess, the AFL standard and just sort of get back to having fun with his footy is the vibe I'm getting from Cameron. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he goes, but it's certainly one where if his body is right and he gets healthy, he could really be a piece. So, and as with his brother, is that really talented, super quick, small forward, good around goal, brings the pressure. So um, I think there's real value certainly in tracking Cameron, but of course you can't get him this year because he's just not going to put his name in the draft or volunteer to join an AFL list again. So thanks for watching guys. And if you enjoyed this video, it might be worth checking out in the description below some of my recent ESPN pieces. So I completed one covering mature ages and really the success that Geelong have been having and how they've really been able to pluck some absolutely phenomenal mature ages in the draft and really how it's still at this point in time an underutilized opportunity for AFL clubs. So that's a good read. And also today I was exploring in my article the concept really of 200 centimeter plus players and all of them coming through, all the top end guys, they're actually key position players now rather than rucks. So... Um, that's an interesting one as well if you're wanting a bit deeper of an insight into the draft and really the way the tolls are really, I guess you could say, evolving, whether it's your tall midfielders, your tall key position players, and really what's in store for the future and what we've yet to see but will certainly be seeing in the future at some point. So, um, But yeah, if you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for future updates. And in coming videos, I'll of course be refocusing back in on the draft and I will certainly be producing an updated power rankings. So um, once my top 20 power rankings are released on ESPN, I'll produce a video sometime after that really covering, it'll be at least my top 50 power rankings. If not, it might even reach out to top 70, maybe even top 80 if I'm feeling generous, really covering off on those talents in this draft that I personally at least view as draftable and players that I would consider. So um, yeah, that's certainly a fan favorite on here. So I, I want to make sure you get a final update and real sort of final view as to, I guess, who I rate really highly. Um, so if there's any other video content or draft ideas that you've got in the lead up to the draft, let me know. I am quite time poor at the moment, but um, if I can piece together the minutes, I might also consider a further additional video. So um, make sure you keep watching. Thanks guys and see you in the next video.